Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to the East Link Events Center in Clarenville, Newfoundland. It's time for game number two of the Herder Memorial Championship Final in the Avalon East Senior Hockey League. The Southern Shore Breakers won the first game on home ice last night. They have a one game to none lead in the series, and they're in town tonight to take on the Clarenville Ford Caribous. My name is Matthew Little. Nathan Edwards is behind the camera as we get set for this game number two. As you can see, the red carpet is rolled out to center ice. The building is packed and it is electric in here as the hometown Caribous make their way out onto the ice. Now it's like the starting lineup. Pender and Dyke on defense. Delaney up front. Joined by Dunahee and Sparks making his first appearance in the final. And A.J. Whippen in goal once again. It'll be the same goaltending matchup as last night in game number one. A.J. Whippen for Clarenville and Mark Yetman for Southern Shore. And everybody will come out onto the blue lines as we're going to have a jersey retirement ceremony before we drop the puck here in game number two. We handed out hardware, the awards around the Avalon East Senior Hockey League before game one yesterday. Congratulations once again to all the award winners. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ty Cole, the center ice for a very special presentation. Ty Cole coming out to center ice for the jersey presentation. A congratulations to both teams being here in the 87th edition of the Herder Final. A big thank you to all the fans for sticking with things and of course to Clarenville Ford. And Bob Bags making his way out onto the ice. Wife, daughter, and son all accompanying Mr. Bags out to center ice. Thank you. 
They ran down the impressive career of Bob Baggs. Played Junior B and Junior A in Nova Scotia before coming back to Newfoundland. Played senior hockey from a very young age as well, and there it is, Bob Baggs, defenseman number four that will go to the rafters here in Clarenville. The players will hoist that up. Everybody will pose for a photo. Congratulations to Bob Beggs one more time. What an honor to have your name and number hanging amongst the rafters. And Bob will stay on the ice to do a ceremonial face-off as well. Now Keith Delaney and Jeremy Nicholas, the captains, will come to center ice for the ceremonial puck drop. And now we will pause for O Canada, and then it will be time to drop the puck on game number two of this Herder final here from East Link Events Center in Clarenville. Game four. It's just about time for game number two of this Herder Finals. Southern Shore took the first game 4-3 yesterday in a great opener back at the Ken Williams Southern Shore Arena. Now we just need to get the red carpet off the ice and we'll be set to go for this one. Comes in, one, he's in, missing game. King my notes, I don't think there's any changes at all from game number one. Nope, identical lineup, top to bottom for Southern Shore. Center ice, the captains will do it for real this time. Nicholas versus Delaney, and we're underway from Clarenville, game number two of this Herder final. Thanks for being with us on AOTV. Southern Shore from just inside their blue line, send it cross ice, Pender over reverse directions, and Sparks puts it in deep. Cadigan goes back to get it behind his net, bothered by Delaney, he'll get it up the wall. Donahue looking to get control along with Dyke, but it's poked out by the breakers. Pender will recollect just inside his own blue line for Clarenville and send it cross ice. Back into the middle they find Sparks. Sparks will bank it off the wall, collides with Nicholas and Southern Shore a chance to come back. Brandon Pye carries in, takes a good shove from Pender as the puck goes to the back wall. Pye will dig it out, trying to get in front for a shot. That will go off stick, up and out of play. And we got our first play stoppage. Just over 40 seconds into period number one. No score between the two teams here in Clarenville.
Reed versus Chaff in the faceoff circle. Ends up in the stick of Hedges. He'll play it all the way out for Clarenville. Shot back in by Southern Shore. Whiffen will come out and stop it in behind the net as the goaltender gets his first touch. We'll talk a little bit more about A.J. Whiffen on our next play stoppage. Hedges behind the net, moves it around to the far side of the ice. Now up ahead, they find Earl. Earl on the rush, and the fans get loud as the shot is in on Yetman. Trying to follow up on the rebound, but it's chipped away. Clarenville still on the attack here, trying to work the cycle, taken away by Southern Shore, and the breakers come out. Spurl tries to take a shot that's blocked off a of skate. All the way back to the line, Houlihan keeps it in, but Clarenville has possession. They'll play it out. Reed. Turning at his own blue line. Now gives it to Earl. Earl will get to center and fire in. They're going to make a line change. Yetman will give it to his D. Cadigan round behind the net to the other side. Now moved up ahead. Into the middle of the ice. They find Dalton on the rush. Oates had to stop to stay on side. Dalton tried to send the puck where Oates would be. But Oates, of course, had lost that momentum because he had to stop up at the blue line. And we get another play stoppage here in the middle of the ice. Two minutes gone in the first period. So we're a little bit later starting this game than we thought we would be, and that's because of A.J. Whiffen, the goaltender for the Clarenville Caribous. Apparently the blade fell out of his skate. And I don't mean just the blade, I mean like everything fell apart on his skates. They had to add extra time to the warm-up so Whiffen could come out and face a couple of pucks because he spent most of warm-up back in the dressing room where they were trying to fix his skate. Luckily he's okay now, and we're underway. 